Hey guys, welcome back to Clownfish TV. This is Neon, I'm here with Geeky Sparkles. Hello. And we're gonna talk about how the comic book industry is not dying. No. Well, parts of it are. And a lot of people are saying that, I think it's the way it, that it's always been is dying. It's just new ways are coming. And that's what everybody's been saying. But no, no, no. The people who wanna scream at the most are the ones going around saying, you're all lying. It's not dead. Oh that's God. impossible. So this is this is coming from Comics Beat. This is actually a guest article by somebody who writes for the Daily Dot. How come I never let anybody else do guest articles about why they're full of crap? I you probably can, but nobody's really reading these sites anymore. But I, I'm gonna put this out there because I, I have a, a bit of a bone uh, to pick with this. Because yeah, you better clarify the rest of that sentence. I have a bit of a bone. Yeah, to they're pick. <laughs> they're putting words into YouTubers' mouths. Basically, uh, they're talking about how the comic book industry is in crisis, but comics aren't going to die. I think every Everybody, even on YouTube, has made it very clear that the comic books themselves, the art form of comics, aren't going anywhere. No, it's just it's just shifting. It's shifting. The direct market is probably going to either fundamentally change or wither away completely because we're seeing fewer and fewer comic shops able to stay in business. It becomes obvious that Diamond uh, being a monopoly is a very bad idea because yeah, we saw what happened. Thing. And a lot of publishers aren't going to be able to survive because the money is not there because, you know, the shops are closing. We're People seeing are, layoffs. We're seeing layoffs. We're seeing licensings get, licenses get taken and things like that. Right. So we're talking, when we talk about the death of the comic book industry, we are primarily talking about the direct market. And I think we've made it very, very they clear. They all made it very clear, but they just don't, they, they just see the headline, don't listen to what you're saying. Uh, it's they most don't. likely what happens. We saw it was with Shira all the time. Every time we said him there, they just read the headlines and just make all kinds of assumptions based on what the headline says. Don't even listen, and then you know insert a bunch of opinions based on nothing. Yeah. So this is coming from a Daily Dot writer who makes sure he gets. And he talks about how comics aren't dying. Comics never will. Well, I don't think anyone's disagree with that. We talk about the current industry, but we get down to the what third, fourth paragraph here. Unfortunately, there's a vocal contingency of grifters and doomsayers. Okay, let me just, wait, whoa, whoa. What experience does this person have other than working from a Daily Dot? Have I they have, they worked in comics before? I don't know. I don't know. Let Could me, find let out, me. because if he hasn't worked in comics before. Uh, Brooklyn-based writer and editor, staff writer at The Beat. Okay. Daily Dot, Shelf Dust, Eisner Award-winning, panel by panel. Was that like a, a one of those anthologies? I, I don't know. Probably. Anyway, my point is, grifters, I love this. The people who are commenting about it are people who have worked in the industry for years. They're not grifters. They're not just there to, to cash in. That is a load of shit. Basically, I don't like what you have to say, so I'm going to try to discredit what you're saying. And I'm also butthurt and jealous that you actually get paid and people listen to you and not me. Look at these grifters at the New York Times. I know. Grifters. Uh, that is, you know, they're just deliberately trying to, well, you, I don't agree with you, so you clearly don't know what you're talking about, so you're clearly a grifter. Look at these grifters over at Forbes. I know, right? Um, Damn. Anyway, lots of grifters. I, I'm I, mad about YouTubers. They're just pissed about YouTubers. Yeah, that's... We're also not far right, by the way. Yeah, we're going to get there. So, unfortunately, there's a vocal contingency of grifters and doomsayers among comic book fans who would have you believe that the combination of these factors spells the end for no, comics. No, it spells the, way, it spells the end for the way comics have been going for years and it's going to shift into something new the direct market uh the grifters are arguing in bad faith and the less said about those reactionary far-right youtubers the better okay, a couple things here one we're not far right two it sounds like someone's butt ass hurt that i had to I give two words there butt ass but hurt. hurt butt ass hurt because they aren't getting the views they think they should be and the youtubers are that's what that's what this whole thing's about yeah, that's what this is they're about. pissed so they're gonna go around calling these people grifters even though many of the people commenting have experience own shops have had experience working in comics for years know people in comics for years mm -hmm. um that does not mean you're a grifter and they're just basically pissed off because people are listening to those people not them i don't I'm also we're not far right no, we're not even right. Like, yeah, I know. It blows people's minds. People who've watched the channel because they get mad that we're not right wing enough. We, we've always said from day one, uh, we are kind of the odd ones out here because we are left leaning moderates. Mm -hmm. um, you know, and we're just kind of looking at this from like, I guess what you call a normie perspective as people who've worked in and around comics, who've worked in entertainment, uh, worked in journalism. And we're just kind of like, look at this from, I guess the mom and pop point of view, like what the hell is going on? Mm -hmm. You know, that is our channel. But um, I, I just, I, I don't understand. Cause I keep seeing this thrown around on Twitter grifters basically anybody who doesn't agree with them yes because I'm like a, you know what a grift is right it's a con it's a uh, people buying comics through YouTube or through crowdfunding isn't a con they're buying a 
product. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, promoting your product on social media is not a con. Then anybody who has a Twitter account or, or an Instagram and wants to sell products, they're grifters too. Mm -hmm. This makes no well, sense. Well, they're basically they're saying grifters with an opinion more than they are with what they. But that's mean. not what it actually. Means. I know, but that's why they're they're, what, they're portraying it. What it means is you're you're deliberately scamming people. You're you're. Yeah, that's, I'm sympathetic to the well-meaning comic book fans, the people who agree with me. Yes, uh, basically is what this means. And the thing is, if you actually listen to most people what they're commenting on, they're not saying what this person says they're saying, which we keep having happen on everything. Now, the interesting thing is Heidi McDonald herself on the beat has actually uh, talked about the sunsetting of the direct market. Well, she's just a grifter and a doomsdayer. I, I guess she's so, just a grifter um, and a doomsdayer. You no, know, because you know too. they're not. Basically, this whole thing is I'm pissed that YouTube for getting more hits than me. I'm pissed that people, you know, actually having other opinions that I don't like. And uh, you know, I'm just gonna you know try to belittle them and make them look like they're less than, so I appear better than. Right. And now going out to another another uh, site, Bleeding Cool, which they have a rivalry, I guess, mm -hmm. Bleeding Cool and Comic Speed. I don't exactly know what the problem is but they don't like each other very much. Well, it's okay. We don't like a lot of them, so it's all good. <laughs> Brian Hibbs, uh, Brian Hibbs, who often writes on Comics Beat, mm -hmm. said, make no mistake, this is an extinction level event for the direct market. Exactly. The direct market market the direct market. not comics in general not comics completely we clearly know that's not happening i mean like you mentioned many times we see it with the with the, the crowdfunding yep we see it with manga is like blowing up no one says comics are ending completely what they're saying is the way that we have been going about it is going to change right that is up that might end that's what people are saying yeah it, mainstream comics might have problems Mainstream comics is going to have problems, but this is not any different than what happened uh, decades ago when comic books went from being collections of newspaper strips only to having original material, right. when we transitioned from the newsstand to the direct market. And I just think it's so funny that that's what they think people are saying. Maybe some people are saying it. Maybe they're thinking like all comics are going to be gone. We come from, from a different way than most people because, well, you worked in, in print comics, but we yes. worked in web comics a lot. Web comics, actually, they, we've been expecting a shift for uh, probably 15, 20 years now, and it hasn't shifted as, as, as much as we thought, but we've been expecting this shift for a while. A lot of people just go online to get their comics now. We yep. see it with uh, Comixology, we see it with web comics, you know, webtoons, etc. Yeah, I was going to talk about that. So we're going to talk about how people are consuming comics differently. And again, just to be very clear, we're talking about the end of comics. We're talking, I mean, I do potentially think Marvel and or DC could just license their characters out. Uh, and stop publishing comics completely because the market's changing and it's not worth it to DC or to uh, Disney and the Warner Brothers to spend the money on their own publishing mm -hmm. outfit. But comics aren't going anywhere. Uh, you know, we talked about Webtoon. We talked about, uh, you know, all these Korean comics, um, the Infinite Scroll. Oh, they get turned into K-dramas. They're getting turned into and, anime. Some of them are so fun. I have a, I have a K-drama problem. I, I admit it. And, I love them. Well, yeah, a lot of them actually came from Webtoons. A lot of them do come from Webtoons, yes. And also uh, Crunchyroll. They're doing anime based on Webtoon. Now, Webtoon, I think, has its own host of problems, at least here in the States, but that's neither here nor there. We're talking about whether or not comics are disappearing and a lot of young creators now. And this is where you know I want to go with this video is basically be like, if you're going to make comics now, what do you do? How do you how do you move forward? Um, but Webtoon is is killing it in terms of eyeballs. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't know if they're killing it in terms of, of money for creators, but well, they are getting they, the eyeballs. They do lean towards they lean kind of towards the Korean contributors, I think. But yeah, yeah, and we'll we'll do we'll talk more about Webtoons. We tried to do an objective Webtoons video, and we got somebody from Webtoons reach out and was like freaking out because but we did a video. <laughs> We, they basically confirmed what we thought <laughs> so and what we were saying anyway, so it was funny. I thought we were very fair. But anyway, that's a whole other thing. Um, web comics. Now, this is this is what... Look, we've been around. We've oh, seen this... it's a dollar this, a day now. Wow. It's a dollar a day? Yeah, look. I might have to do that. Um, this is the thing. We've, we come from web comics. We did web comics for years. And we saw this same us versus them mentality between web comics creators and people, the elites who were working in print mm -hmm. comics. Basically, people working in print comics and the media for the longest time looked down their noses 
at people doing web comics. And then when they realized that there was actually money to be made in web comics, that they could see that web comics creators were uh, transforming their audience. And they were getting book de publishing deals on their own. Right, right. They were getting publishing deals. And all of a sudden, it was cool to do web comics. And you had, you know, uh, professionals like Mark Wade trying to get into web comics. But uh, that's funny. Fundamentally, Fundamentally, these people never understood how the internet worked. We're seeing the exact same thing. Yeah, we ran into that when we talked to them. Yeah. <laughs> they obviously did not know how this They all understand how it works. But um, we're seeing the exact same thing right now with the uh, old guard comic book media outlets and um, the creators versus YouTube versus people who are doing a lot of crowdfunding right now. And I understand there are at times political disagreements, but what boils down to is people are finding other better ways to make comics and the old guard wants to paint it as something different and demonize these people. It happened with web comics. It happened with crowdfunding at first. You know, Kickstarter went, it started. I remember so many, uh, so many comic book sites being like, oh, Kickstarter is, uh, it's e-begging. And if you were really serious about comics, you would go get a job with a publisher or you would just save up like $10,000 no, and go publish a you book. You could get a job with a publisher that we know you can't get because we are making sure we're the gatekeepers. He, he, he. Right. So then what happens? Okay, so Kickstarter blows up, webcomics blows up. They try to install gatekeepers in webcomics. They try to install gatekeepers at Kickstarter. Well, we saw how that worked out. Yep. Kickstarter had to lay off 45% of their staff, including their comic book outreach person. Um, so they're very bad at this. This has been going on for a long time. And nobody's saying comics are dying. Uh, manga sales are through the roof. Yes. So it's just direct market is in trouble. Comics yeah. in general aren't going away anytime soon. I think there's different markets for it. There's different ways of showing it. It's just that what people associate with comics, mostly like the superhero comics, yeah. are and the you know the main the mainstream publishers are the ones that are taking the hit. I don't think it's it's so much every comic ever. It's just it's just changing. It's evolving. Right, which is the same point I think he's trying to make in his article, but what he's also saying is don't listen. He's making the YouTubers out to be saying something different. Meanwhile, those YouTubers that he's throwing shade at, a lot of them, uh, a lot of them are making hundreds of thousands of dollars and they refuse to talk about it in a lot of these outlets unless they can throw shade at them. Right. Because to them, they didn't earn it. They didn't deserve well, they're it. they're trying to gatekeep. And again, this is nothing new. No. We, we've seen this before, but uh, if these guys were part of the inner circle, oh, they'd be all over the place. They'd be all over, forever. like, oh my God, they're you know they made four hundred thousand dollars, eight hundred thousand. Well, they weren't talking about Peter Semetti either. They were deliberately no. blacklisting him from being talked about until they needed new ways to have outreach, and since he already went and found new ways because they had already done shitty things to him, then they wanted to talk about him because he was out there keeping it going when they couldn't. Then he was worth talking about. Yeah, I'm actually... They wanted to, to steal from him, you know, learn from... I'm sorry. Learn from him. Steal from him. Learn from him. Well, I, you know, and I'll actually give Bleeding Cool some props on that. They actually did a fair article about Alterna. Yeah, and after the fact. After the fact. When they're desperate, when the chips are down, they're like, ah, oh, shit. You know, um, we got to figure out how to survive. They, they want to stay They want to stay in business, too. They have to report on what's actually out there, and that's what they had to do. Yeah, nobody's reporting on the fact that uh, uh, Cyber Frog number two, I think, is up to seven or $800,000 on Indiegogo. Now, what they did... Oh, I recognize this article. It's because you wrote it. I wrote this article because I'm like, why me and my uh, naivete back in the day, I was like, I don't understand why the comics media outlets aren't talking about these massive, massive successes and it's because I didn't realize that there was a clear political bias mm -hmm. and a, uh, gatekeepers trying to continue to well, you can just, gatekeepers and comics are synonymous anymore. They've been for years. Yeah, it, it's it, nothing has changed. Ooh, there's the Kaiju Kitty. I still have it. She's so cute. She Pinky Boo has one also. Um, so when Sean Gordon Murphy decides he's gonna he's gonna take a cue from these guys mm -hmm. and launches Indiegogo campaign. Right. Um, they were throwing shade at him for daring to go to Indiegogo. Well, that's where... Indiegogo. It's because he went to Indiegogo. Yeah. Even though people were going to Indiegogo for years. Indiegogo, they were. Yeah. It started about the same time as Kickstarter. Yeah. Here's the thing. Uh, a little history lesson. A lot of people, I think, just came into it recently. We've been around for a long, long time with the digital comics. Indiegogo was around. The re People had a choice. Kickstarter was more was highly more regarded as the, the more professional way to go. Yeah. But what happened with Indiegogo was, it used to be, I don't know if it still is, you could either, you know, get the whole amount or you can get whatever you get. Where a Kickstarter, you had to have the whole amount funded to actually get your money. Indiegogo allowed you, like, I want 10000 but I got six. Well, I can still go with six. I'll get six. You can choose. 
um, you know, cancel if you don't get the whole amount or move forward with what yeah. you get. And then a lot of people didn't do it as much because they thought it was somehow shadier because of that. But it's no. been around for years and years and years and years and years. Um, it's not a new thing. And everyone was fine with Indiegogo, too. It just depended on what your goals were. Um, but now it's supposed to be a bad thing because, you know, Kickstarter said so. Yeah, everybody was fine with Indiegogo until... Uh, people they didn't like from YouTube started using it. Not not to mention that there were a lot of web comics people who maybe uh, lived outside the country could only use Indiegogo, not Kickstarter. I'm thinking, uh, was it Stand Still, Stay Silent? Oh one yeah, of them? because she's in the I think the Netherlands. She only could use Indiegogo. She right. could only use, and she did well on that. And there were several other campaigns. Again, Indiegogo is not a new thing. It's been around almost as long, if not longer, than Kickstarter. What it reminds me of is it, is it Coke said Pepsi was bad because they didn't want people to go to Pepsi. I think and so. Then yeah. Dude was saying it was bad. It was joining Coke because it was bad because they didn't want it. They, they thought they were all right. Yeah, this you know, is this is kind of like, this know, is ridiculous. It is. All, the other day they're all different soda pops, but you yeah, know, um, same thing, just different flavors. And you look at Kickstarter. Kickstarter has had you know a couple six figure um, comics campaigns, but they're fewer and further between than they used to be. Now Todd McFarlane did well. He did like two million dollars, but he was also kickstarting a toy, and it's Todd freaking McFarlane. Yeah, you know. Um, now Sean Gordon Murphy is a big name now. But Todd McFarlane back in the day was like a freaking household name. Yeah. Like, Good morning, I think, America. I think most he people was, would know that. You'd hope. You would but hope. But then again, a lot of people I'm finding out don't uh, didn't know that Voltron, Transformers, and She-Ra all existed before like the last few years too. So. Yeah. So it's just a bunch of uh, jealous, jealous people. You know, this, the usual suspects. There's about a couple dozen of these people that go around and just, you know, I have concerns. And they use multiple alt accounts because they have concerns. They're jealous because... While a lot of people have to... Oh, they're allowed to be old. Yeah, they're allowed to be old. Uh, while a lot of people are having to stop work in comics because of the direct market, uh, other people are finding a way around. And but that's not new. They've been finding no. a way. People who wanted to get books done or money have been finding a way around for like years and years and years. Because like I said, we come from web comics. We've been doing it for decades. This should be applauded. That's what gets me is like... Under normal circumstances, if we were not so po you know crazy politicized right now, mm -hmm. if this country and this industry wasn't so crazy political 10 years ago, this would have been applauded like, oh my God, there are people out there using YouTube to make hundreds of thousands of dollars doing comic books. Hell yeah, that's the way to yeah, go. A few years ago, it would have been. It would have been. But because, you know, we've got the crabs in the bucket, crabs in the barrel, uh, they're pissed off that people are doing an end run around the system. And well, um, they, they want they got themselves in to control the system. They thought they controlled everything. People are like, N you know, you shut the windows and the doors. I got a chainsaw. I'm making my own opening. Yeah. And now they're pissed. Oh, no, no. You have to come in. And let me control you. I get to dictate. No, you don't. You don't get to tell us jack shit. And then they're mad about it. Well, that's what happened. They told these people on YouTube, like, fine, you don't like comics. Go make your own comics. They tried. They did. To, they did. And now they're bitching about it. Now they just try to, to uh, you know, avoid talking about them because they don't want to promote them. It's like, no, it's actually the other way around. If you want anybody to give a shit about your comics or your website, YouTube has to talk about it. Mm -hmm. The 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 turntables, the turntables. That's what happened, and uh, they're very very mad because, like you said, they've been the gatekeepers for years. They've been able to uh, be the tastemakers, but yeah, again, graphic novel sales are up because comic stores are closed yeah so graphic people are still buying graphic novels on amazon they're buying graphic novels in, in bookstores they're still we, we buying comics buy, we didn't buy this one though and i'm not no we're not that. buying this one but I, i'm just saying like it hasn't stopped comics from being made uh you know we saw the comics in in uh walmart allegiance mm -hmm. okay that's another sticky subject because the beat covered allegiance comics right um this is uh the bright Wisers. And they worked for DC. They worked mm -hmm. for Marvel. They've they've been around for years. They don't like the politics of these people, though. So they get a big deal with Walmart, and their books are in Walmart. They're on end caps in Walmart. Everybody. They are. We saw them. Yeah. You you can't in the exact miss them. same section that they're showing. Yeah, it was in the same section. It was over by the toys and books. This should be applauded. Like, oh my God, a small publisher, an upstart publisher, got DC and Marvel talent. They've got their books on the end cap in all these WalMarts. You know, again, 10 years ago, this would have been well, they, they amazing. Well, all over when DC had their stuff in there. These are easier to find than DCs. Mm -hmm. How long did it take us to find the DC And the books? DCs were just like re, re, just reprints. reprints and stuff. These are actually new stories. Yeah, I mean, look, I don't know if it's going to work out long term for them because, you know, you're not dealing with Superman, Batman, Wonder Woman. But the fact that a, a new comic book publisher 
in the middle of a pandemic can get this stuff into Walmart mm -hmm. should be applauded. The fact that people are out there making hundreds of thousands of dollars on comic book projects should be applauded. It's showing that it can be done. It's showing that it can be done. But their takeaway is don't listen to them. Don't listen to them because they're just a bunch of grifters mm -hmm. and uh, they're all alt right. Yeah, I mean, we're neither of those things. No, and most of the people, I would say 95% of the people who are following this are like, no, you guys have just, the beat has lost track of it. They're, they're not keeping time. They've lost mm -hmm. track of it. They're completely out of touch. And the beat was actually one of the first websites to really follow uh, the uptick in manga, mm -hmm. uh, the uptick tick in web comics and graphic novels they were actually giving uh those other outlets for comics attention before anybody else was so they called it back then but now they have completely lost it what's it i would say in the last like five or six years it's there hasn't been reason anymore it's just well who did you vote for it, it's it's ridiculous you know it's absolutely ridiculous and, and it's irrelevant yeah i'll be honest i didn't vote last time because i didn't like either candidate so whatever i'm just like i don't care i don't even care enough to vote at this point like i just i don't care um i'm not a very political person mm -mm. you know we got we got involved in this stuff accidentally accidentally uh we've never been that political i've never really even given much thought to to politics on a day-to-day -day basis but now pop culture has become a battleground for politics it's and ridiculous it's freaking stupid you know again people are making money in comics comics are not dying uh, at all, but the direct market, yeah, I think it's, yeah, it's direct time is, is, is up. Quiet. So I would tell people, uh, I would, because we have people ask us, like, you know, what would you recommend for somebody to come into comics now? Uh, I would say do your own thing. Yeah, I agree. You know, do your own thing, build your own audience, don't depend on these other publishers because there's no guarantee they're going to be around. And even if you go the route and get the agent and all that stuff, doesn't mean that you're going to get anywhere either, as we found. So, you yeah. know, just do your yeah. own thing. And we'll, we'll try to do more videos like this, I think, in the future, talking about, you know, and, you know, you tell us what, what you want to see. I mean, you want us to talk about the industry or, or specifics, you know, how to's or whatever. Uh, let us know in the comments. Yep. And we're going to wrap this one up. Yep. And we'll talk to you guys later. Bye. Thinking about printing your own comic books, graphic novel, or manga? We recommend our friends over at Print Ninja. We've been using Print Ninja as long as they've been printing comics and both the quality and price is excellent. Mention Clownfish TV and get an additional 5% overrun of your book order quantity printed for free. For free! That's free books, people. Just mention this offer on the phone or in the additional information box on the quote request form. That's PrintNinja.com or click on the link in the description below. Hey guys, thanks for watching Clownfish TV. Please consider supporting the channel. Go to clownfishsupport.com. That's clownfishsupport.com. And if you want to join our community, go to clownfishtalk.com. That's clownfishtalk.com. Please subscribe, ring the bell for notifications. We will talk to you next time.